Hi there everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and as promised today I'm going to uh, give you a tutorial on how to make tarot boxes um, or other storage boxes for well anything really but um, we're going to focus today on storing decks of cards. So um, a couple of preemptive uh, announcements before we get started. Um, I want to make a disclaimer that this was not my idea. I was originally inspired to make this kind of tutorial based on a video from Kristen at Over the Moon Academy, and I will link her video below. Um, she really launched me on this exploration and doing some prototyping for my own boxes, and I want to give her full credit for that. Um, Kristen's video is very helpful in getting started. I think it's very accessible. Um, however, she does uh, go about this in a slightly different way. She uses different materials and equipment and um, makes a slightly different style of box. So um, that meets her needs better. So if you're interested, go watch her video and you might get some uh, more inspiration that way. Um, another inspiration is Justin Michael, um, who just posted a a very in-depth tutorial on how to make a very sturdy style of box out of um, cardboard. Um, we're going to be making boxes out of essentially um, materials that you, you should have laying around. So if you want something that's a lot stronger and thicker and heavier than what I'm going to show you in this video, um, go check out Michael's channel and he will walk you through that process. I want to thank both of them for um, helping, you know, our tarot community um, learn some of these skills. So um, the other thing I will say is that I watch a lot of tutorials online and I always get frustrated when um, people start off their video saying, and we're going to use things that you should have just laying around the house. And then they start listing all this weird shit that I don't have in my house. Um, that I don't, I don't really think are necessarily things that people would have on hand. So what I'm really trying to do here is focus on materials that I genuinely think most people would probably have. And so these should be essentially free to make. Um, or if you had to go out and get one item, it would be an inexpensive item. So that's my goal. Um, hopefully you all agree. And now, as I mentioned in my last video, there are a lot of ways that decks are packaged and there are different box styles that people prefer. So in this tutorial, um, I'm going to cover two different styles of box. I'm going to cover a tuck box, which would look sort of like this. This is a commercial style one. Um, and I'm also going to cover a traditional two-piece box, which would look something like this with a separate lid and bottom. Now I may have to split this video up into two parts, so if I do, I'll let you know at the end of part one, we'll talk about tuck boxes first. And with that, let me run down uh, what we're gonna do today, the materials we need, and an outline of the steps, and then I'll show you the steps in a little bit more detail. So I'm not actually gonna be constructing a lot of stuff on camera. I find it tricky and difficult and my desk is quite full. I have some um, expensive decks out to show you. So I don't wanna get glue on things that shouldn't have glue on them um, and be knocking things over. So I've got this kind of rig like you would see a cooking show where you see some steps and then you see, and here's one we prepared earlier and I can kind of walk you through the process. Um, I will also be posting these directions and some templates on my website. So I'll link to that below as well. If you go on waterchildtarot.com, there'll be some free, um, a free blog post or, or templates that you can use to um, kind of pace, walk, walk through this yourself. And so with that, let me um, get started. So what you will need for materials, um, today we're going to be using office folders to make our boxes. And um, I just happen to have a lot of these. Um, I also work at a place where we have a lot of them, and I don't want to encourage you to steal from your office, you know, please ask permission. Um, but we have uh, cabinets and cabinets full of used office folders that no one is using. So I figured it would be okay to, you know, have a few for arts and crafts time. What I like about this material is that it's stiff enough to have structure, you know, it's thicker than something like an index card, um, but it's also uh, flexible enough that you can bend it and we're going to have to fold this into uh, our box shapes. Now you could use anything you want. I think Kristen uses um, watercolor paper, heavy watercolor paper, and that seems to, to work out well. 
Um, but watercolor paper is kind of expensive, and so if it's not something that you have extra of or that you, do, you don't use on a regular basis, you may not have watercolor paper around. Um, something you might have around the house is cereal boxes, and I think that you could probably do a pretty good job with cereal boxes. Um, what I do like about the office folders as well is that they are acid-free. So you can get acid-free office folders, and that way you know you're putting your cards in an acid-free um, container. So they're not going to get um, acid damaged from that. So you have your material that you're making your box out of. The other items that you'll need are something to cut with. I just have scissors here. Um, if you have something fancier to cut with, you know, a rotary cutter, a guillotine cutter, um, you can certainly use any other method that you like, but a pair of scissors should work just fine. Um, you will need something to measure with, and I prefer a ruler that has centimeters and millimeters on it because you can really dial in and get an exact measurement. But if you just have a Western um, inch ruler, that's fine. Just make sure you're measuring to the nearest, I think that's a sixteenth of an inch or something like that, whatever that smallest um, measurement is on an inch ruler. And you can use this also as a straight edge, so you will need a straight edge. Um, I also was using a T-square like this just to make sure I was cutting my lines straight and had a metal surface to score against, but you don't have to have this. You can just have whatever kind of ruler that you can lay your hands on. Um, you'll need a pencil to mark your measurements, of course. And then you will also need some kind of adhesive. Now I tried a couple different kinds of glue, but you could use a very strong uh, double-sided tape if you want, or some other kind of glue other than these two. Um, the craft glue did okay, but it was very wet and it did warp the um, paper a bit as it was drying. So I found that I preferred the super glue over this one. I'm not sure of the archival qualities of this glue. I don't think it's necessarily something that would be used in an archival situation, um, partially because it can't be undone. Once you glue with this glue, it can't be undone, um, whereas this glue dissolves with water, so you could always undo the process. Um, but you can make your own glue. You can just use uh, a little bit of flour and water to make um, wheat paste, and um, there are other kinds of glue that you could use, um, but whatever you're comfortable with with that. And again, you could also use double-sided tape if you prefer that. All right, so let's talk about the steps, and let me just outline re really quickly. So we're going to start with our office folder here. Um, and you want to be aware of whether your office folder has any kind of printing on it, if that bothers you. So if you're going to cover up with decoration, that's fine. Otherwise, you might just want to look at the front and back and see if there's any marks on your office folder. And that way, if you need to, you can choose which side is going to be the outside of your box. Then you're going to measure your deck very carefully, and I'll show you how to take those measurements and which measurements to take. You're going to transfer the measurements from your deck onto your piece of um, material that you're going to use to make your box out of. Then you're going to the, draw your lines and score along those lines and fold your, um, your material. Then you're going to remove the excess, so in, in all of the designs that we're talking about today, um, for both the uh, two-piece box and the tuck box, you're going to have a little bit of extra material left over. Um, then you're going to fold that box up into its 3D shape, and you're going to test and make sure that it fits the deck before you glue it. Um, then you'll add your glue or your tape and let that set, and then you can optionally decorate and finish off your box by cutting uh, finger holes and things like that. So let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to start with a tuck box design. And one thing I want to point out um, that I think maybe some people don't realize is why tuck boxes are hard to open. Um, and one of the reasons is that when tuck boxes are commercially cut at the factory, they're cut with these little slits in the lid. Um, and I don't know what the purpose of this is. I assume it has to do with some aspect of the machine that makes these and die cuts them out and then maybe folds them. Um, needs these little slits to like hook onto to grab it or something like that. But what happens is you get the um, the edge of this flap can catch on the leading edge of this flap. So that little thing can hook around there 
um, right and prevent you from opening the box. And then you force it and then you tear, either usually you tear right here or you might tear this part off. Um, and then that becomes less structurally sound and less, uh, less helpful, essentially. Um, so I think that's one of the design flaws in commercially made tuck boxes. Unfortunately, as we're going to make our own, we don't have to cut these little slots. So I think homemade uh, tuck boxes are actually easier to get in and out of. Now, I did notice also when I was putting this one back that it has a nice design where this uh, leading flap is cut away at an angle. So this is certainly a design element that we could include so that this is just a lot easier. You just push with your thumb. And again, it's not gonna get caught right here um, at these two joins and tear something or be frustrating. Now, when I was coming up with how to design these, um, I first just looked carefully at an existing example. And so here we can see on this tuck box, we have a seam here where this material is cut. So what we have here is a thickness, a width, a thickness, and a width, and then another thickness, right, that loops around, and that's the part that gets glued inside the box. So those are the measurements. And then here, going from top to bottom, we have the thickness of the deck, we have some extra material here, and I've just included that as another thickness, so you get a nice deep flap that sits in there well. The length, and then a thickness, and a thickness. So here is an example of what these templates look like. So again, the thickness, thickness, length, thickness, thickness to make a tuck box that opens at the top and the bottom. And then these two sides wrap around and form that box shape. If you want um, something that just has a single opening at the top, then you would do this way where you have two thicknesses on one side and only one thickness on the bottom. And here I've shown you um, how to, where you get those measurements and then where to put your glue. So we'll come back to this in just a second. So let's talk about measuring our deck. And I'm just gonna put this down because it's a little bit less busy. All right, so you need your deck and you need your measuring device. And what I like to do for the width and the height, I like to measure a single card um, because it's just a lot easier than trying to measure something that's sort of shifting around on the table. But if you have a handmade deck, you might notice that not all the cards are the same size. So here you can see I've stacked them on the tabletop and you can tell that these are hand cut and they're not exactly lining up. So what I did for this deck was I came in here and I felt for the thickest card that I could get and I pulled that one out to make sure I measured that one because if you're off by a couple of millimeters, suddenly your whole deck won't fit in the box you just spent time making. So um, just have that in mind, you know, take a very close look at your deck and make sure all the cards are exactly the same size or choose the largest card when you're gonna measure. For the tuck box, you can have a very close measurement so here I'm just going to lay this card. Um, actually, I'll do this zoom in a little bit. So here I'm just going to lay my ruler right on here. And just make sure I am square and even. And I'm going to measure exactly the number of millimeters of the width of this pack. And then I'm going to add one millimeter. And that's the measurement that I'm going to write down. So for a tuck box, you don't need a lot of extra um, uh, allowance here in the card size. You can just measure it very closely down to the millimeter. Um, but just add, either round up or add one millimeter um, to whatever measurement you see so that you can make sure that your box is not going to be too small. Um, so that's your width. And then you'll of course get the length of your deck by measuring the length of one card. And again, you can add a single millimeter to the length of this card just to make sure that your, your box is gonna be the right size. And then your thickness of your deck, you'll need the whole thing. And what I like to do for this is lay it down and measure from the flat tabletop up. So lay it down like this, make sure they're in a line and then hold the ruler up um, you would hold it straight up. Um, this is at an angle, obviously, but you hold it straight up and you'll just look here to make sure that you're holding 
holding this in the right place and that you get an accurate measurement there. And then you want to write those measurements down. And you can see I took measurements. Um, I have four different uh, historic decks that I wanted to make boxes for. And even the, um, the decks that are by the same uh, producer are not necessarily going to be the same size. So here, these uh, are two decks by Pablo Robledo. And you can see they're off by a couple of millimeters um, here and there. The thickness is the same, I think, because he is the same card stock. So 78 cards. Um, is going to end up the same thickness on each one, but the Vandenbore is larger in the width than the Besançon, and the Besançon is larger in length than the Vandenbore. So, you know, I have to make sure I keep track, if I'm making multiple boxes for different decks, that I really make sure and I keep track of all my measurements um, carefully. On my template, I also write down which deck I'm measuring for um, before I get started, and that way, um, I, when I transfer the measurements onto this, then I don't get confused and I don't have an issue of, you know, maybe measuring part of it with one set of measurements and part of it with another and, and building something that's not going to work. To transfer your measurements, you're just going to follow the, um, the instructions in the template the way I outlined. And I like to start again because these uh, materials are factory made and they're very straight and plumb. What I like to do is um, start from an edge. So let's say that this is going to be the bottom of my box. I actually measure off of this edge and I go thickness, thickness, length, thickness, thickness. And then I measure off of this seam in the middle. So I go width, thickness in this direction and then thickness, width, thick, thickness in this direction. And each time I want to make sure that I'm really just taking my time and that my head is right over um, my measuring device and I'm not looking at it from an angle or off to the side, but I'm, I've got my head right over my work and I can really see where I'm marking this line so that I get a nice accurate measurement. Once you've got all of your tick marks made and you want to measure um, so you want to do tick marks on along one side and then tick marks along the other side. And then you're going to take your straight edge and your pencil and draw your lines and connect your measuring marks like that. So draw straight down. Then once you transfer all of your measurements around, I like to mark where I'm going to be cutting. So you'll see these kind of squiggles and X's here. This is like get rid of this material so that I don't accidentally cut the wrong thing or cut off part of my box that I wanted to keep. Um, then from there, I like to score. And scoring can be a little bit tricky. Um, so I didn't use a scoring tool. Um, I just used the back of my scissors because they're, um, they're sharp enough to make a dent and scratch this material, but not, not so sharp that they're gonna cut through it because that's what you wanna do. You wanna just kind of dig in a little bit and make a clean place to be able to fold this material without um, without kind of getting a weird wonky uh, fold um, and also without cutting through. So when you're scoring, um, especially if you're scoring with something made out of metal, you wanna use moderate pressure um, and not really hard pressure. And the other thing about scoring is sometimes it's hard to see where your scoring tool is lining up. You don't want to have your ruler right on this line. If you have your ruler right on your pencil line, you're actually gonna be scoring a couple of millimeters off to the side. Um, at least that's what I found. So what you need to do is get a scrap piece of this material or just practice over in the margin somewhere um, off to the side and, and kind of get a visual on where exactly your scoring tool is hitting so that you can make sure that you're getting uh, your score onto your pencil mark because you took all this time and effort to measure your deck carefully and transfer all those measurements and um, but if you score in the wrong place your paper is going to want to fold in that place and not on your on your line so that can be a little bit tricky one of the reasons I like to score um, before I cut is that you have a little bit of extra material here. And so as you're scoring, you don't have to worry so much about accidentally scratching your work surface, your desk or your table. Um, so I always start my scoring a little bit in from the very edge and use again, use moderate pressure, go down the line and then stop before I get to the edge of my material so that I don't scratch my table.
So once you've got that scored, then you can cut out the excess material. So here I'd be cutting along this line, this line, and this line. And then you can fold your box and test it. Now I will say that for um, a tuck box, for a slightly undersized kind of tarot de Marseille style deck, this is not a full size tarot. So here is one of the Pablo Robledo decks and here's a regular full size tarot deck. And you can see that this is a bit smaller. Um, so for something like this, you could probably actually get two boxes out of a single um, file folder. And I'll show you that here. So instead of starting from the middle, if you started from this edge and measured over, you can probably get two boxes here. Um, because if we look at our little prototype here, this actually fits um, on this side. So to the uh, east of the central seam. And then if I take this and put it here, it also fits um, completely on here to the west. Now it would um, maybe lose just a tiny bit with the notch that's cut into this file folder. So just keep that in mind, but it's not the end of the world because this flap is one that we're gonna cut off. You can see the X there, so that's gonna be extra material anyway. All right, so once you've cut off your extra material here, then you can go ahead and um, fold your box along the score lines, and you'll see that uh, you can fold nice and neatly there. If you don't score, what will happen is that you'll still be able to fold this, but it'll be it'll be lumpy and uneven and I don't know if you can how well you can see that but that's not really a straight line and it's not really folding crisply and making a nice kind of knife edge corner on the box so that's why scoring is important so for this tuck box um, template here um, I've also included the places where you're going to apply glue um, so you're going to fold this thickness up I'm going to put glue on these two tabs and then glue them to the bottom of the box like this. Then I'm going to put more glue here and glue that. And then this little extra tab here is going to be excess, so that'll get cut off. Then I'm going to put glue here and glue this down. And then I will have a glued bottom and a tuckable top. And you can see here with my X's and things, some of this is again gonna be extra material. But before I start gluing away and, and trimming things, um, I do wanna make sure that my cards are gonna fit in here. So we did carefully measure and we marked which box this was gonna be. This is gonna be for the Vandenborg, so it's got a V right there. But I'm just gonna lay these in here and make sure that they really actually do fit because if they don't, then I'm gonna cut my losses and start over and make another one. So holding carefully with my hand, making sure that this flap is gonna go all the way around and be able to be glued into place. And there you go, they do. They fit right in there, They're very snug, um, but they fit tightly and they don't shift around in an awkward way. And I'm gonna be able to get this flap in here pretty, pretty well. So. All right, so just before we glue this box together, and this is a different, um, one that I was just showing, but uh, it's a similar concept. So this is the one that has the tuck at the top and the bottom, as opposed to the one I was showing earlier, which had um, a glued bottom and just one side that you can open. Um, and I'll show you how to glue this together, but I wanted to also mention a couple of little additional uh, tweaks that you can make to your box design to make it easier to get in and out of. So the first thing you'll notice is that um, I have these little cutouts for your thumb. So you can uh, grab the pack of cards and pull it out. And um, that's helpful, especially because this box is quite snug fitting. The other thing that makes the box a little bit easier to get in and out of um, is to cut back the lid just a little bit. So here on this commercial box, you can see that the tuck flap, the top flap has a crease here but they've actually cut back the top of the box and scored about maybe a centimeter or so, half an inch, 
um, down this way. And what this does is makes it possible to reach in here and get hold of the pack from the top and the bottom. So the thumb cutout gives you purchase on one side and then the, this back cut gives you purchase on the other side. So to do that, you would just kind of eyeball with your ruler um, on the space opposite your thumb hole cutouts, um, that centimeter, and just I just held this in place and then scored with my scissors and then took my scissors and cut in to this score line here. So it's not an exact measurement. Again, it's approximately one centimeter, but it can be whatever you need it to be to be comfortable. Um, you just want to make it not too deep, but just a little bit so that this um, top flap can rock her back and give you that extra room. And I recommend doing all of this before you glue the box. It's much easier to do this um, on a flat piece of material than it is to try to, um, for example, cut these circles out, half circles out, um, once the thing is in three dimensions and you're trying to cut into a into a box that's, um, you know, in a, in a three-dimensional plane. The other thing that you can think about before you glue, but you'll have to kind of complete after you glue, is uh, decoration. So let's talk about decoration next, and then I'm going to demo gluing and then show you some finished boxes. So um, one uh, way that you can decorate is just to freeform decorate the outside. You could um, do whatever you want on this outside part. So again, it might be easier to do this when the box is flat, if you're gonna paint or draw something on here. If you're gonna attach something like wrapping paper or uh, something else, um, it may or may not be easier to do it flat. I'm gonna do it after the fact, but you could experiment with that. Um, but what I'm gonna use are um, some decorative pieces of paper that some of my historic decks came with. So back in the days of yore, um, tarot decks would not have come in a box. They would have come wrapped in a paper from the printer. And these are representative examples of that from modern artists who create reproduction decks. So here's one from Pablo Robledo. Um, here's another one from Pablo Robledo. It's just in black and white, not in full color. Um, and he actually carves these into, I don't, I'm, I think it's linoleum, um, and stamps these and sends them with his deck. So it's a nice thing to have. And then here's another one from Sullivan Hisman's um, for his Budapest tarot. So these are really cool. Um, Sullivan Hisman's even signed and numbered um, the one that he sent to me. So that was really nice. Um, and I don't want to use these. I consider these to be original works of art as well. So I don't want to use these. So what I've done is I've just used my photocopier to make a copy. And then this is what I'll be cutting up and adhering onto the outside of my boxes. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to know exactly how that's going to work out. Um, you might have to, you know, make a couple copies and kind of experiment. Um, but on this tuck box, which will be for this, um, Besson's on deck, um, I've decided that I'm going to use two copies of the original artwork and I'm going to place them roughly like this and then I'm going to have to um, cut off the tabs on this one and have it wrap around to the other side. And again, you might find this is easier to do this way. Um, my concern is that I want to glue um, folder to folder. So if I if I do this, then I wanna make sure when I'm gluing, I'm still adhering the folder onto itself and not paper on paper because you need the structure of this overlap for the box to really work properly. Um, if you just glue office paper to itself, it may not hold up and I'm imagining the seam will be very weak and it will the box will eventually come open um, as the glue gives out. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But um, I'm going to show you just how to glue this without the decoration on and then I will show you the finished boxes that I've made at the end of this video. So this box is a little bit easier to glue up than the um, other one where we had to glue the bottom and the side. Here I'm just going to glue the side. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take my glue and tap it for manufacturer recommendations. And then this glue, it's always good to know like what the holding strength of your glue is. On the directions for this uh, super glue, it says one small dot per square inch. So 
Um, this is probably a little glue overkill, but I do want it to hold securely. So I've put that on there and then I'm just gonna fold this and try to get it lined up and fold it like that and then hold it in place for a few seconds while the glue sets. If you are using a craft glue, something that with a longer drying time, what you might wanna do is get some removable masking tape like washi tape or painter's tape. And you know, once you get your glue kind of um, in the right place, then you could tape this um, with a removable tape and that way you, um, you have more time to let this dry and set up and actually um, dry in the correct position. And there you go, our box is finished because we glued our one side. So we can fold this over, tuck this in. Now, if you wanna be very careful, um, especially if your deck costs a lot of money, um, you might wanna let this set up a little bit longer before you put cards in because there's a chance that some loose glue could get on a card and cause an issue. But I'm gonna take a risk here and just put these cards in here. And there we have our tuck box. And again, I did not put the cutouts here, like you see on a commercial tuck box. So I didn't do these cutouts, which are the ones that get stuck and cause a problem. Uh, mine are just flat, but I did taper the flap in so it's easier to get in here. And I did the cut back here so that when we go in to get the cards out, we can actually pull this flat back bit and then be able to grab the whole deck on each side and pull it out. So I'm very pleased with this fit. This is very nice and I will show you what these boxes look like once they're decorated. And here are the finished boxes. So um, this is the Besançon deck and this had the black and white cover. Um, so I just made two copies of this and wrapped them around. And these aren't perfect, and that's okay with me. Um, you've got a bit of the box showing underneath, so you have this kind of two-tone effect. I may come back with some watercolor markers and actually color this in a little bit, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. This is the box that has the flaps on either end, so I like that you can um, alternate how you open the box, and that way you're not putting too much stress or wear and tear on any one side. Uh, but this came out really well, and I'm quite pleased with it. And then over here, we have the example that has the glued bottom. So there's no double tuck flap here. Um, there's just a solid bottom on one side. It allows you to decorate a little bit. We've got the title of the deck on one side. Again, this is the decorative paper that came with this deck. And um, that paper only had one uh, end on it. So I just repeated it on both sides. And then on the top, I managed to save this flap and glue it on top of the flap of the box. And again, you can get right in there and grab the cards out. So yeah, those are our tuck boxes. And stay tuned for next week when I'll show you how to make a two-piece box based on this method. Until then, take care, be well, and I'll see you soon.